we now have a working Padook programmer. So it can uh, we can install the firmware, it can talk to a chip, so let's show how that might work in real life. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, inside VirtualBox, I'm going to install a new operating system. So this is what I sometimes do when I'm looking at um, working with something like a new tool chain or you know a new piece of software or just to basically uh, in this case uh, selfishly <laughs> have a look at Linux Mint 20 because I'm actually running in the background Linux Mint 19.3 so 19.3 in the background um, Oracle VirtualBox running on the top of that and then I downloaded the Linux Mint 20 uh, ISO and um, ran it inside VirtualBox and now it's just installing on a, a virtual hard drive so yeah i like to do this from time to time um in this case it serves two purposes uh, it's it shows how easy or difficult it is to be running the uh, paduk easy pdk programming tool chain including the um, you know the uploader and the software and so forth um but also yeah it, for me it's just a, a quick look at um, linux mint 20 to see if it's worth um, uh, following through I've sped this up to about four times of what it should be, um, so you don't have to go through the, the whole lot yourself, but it is a pretty easy process. I, I think it probably takes about, you know, um, seven or eight minutes, I guess, to install the new operating system. Um, you can skip things like the language packs. I don't think I'd do in this case, but um, yeah. I've also got under VirtualBox um, the Windows 10 uh, operating system so that I can run that from time to time. So I also have checked out this software on Windows 10 and it works fine. And a couple of other operating systems as well, just um, just for fun, uh, depending on your definition of that word. So we're almost finished here. And then what we'll do is um, we'll restart and we'll go to the uh, free PDK GitHub and download there's a lot there yeah, and you can certainly clone all the repositories um, I think in this case I'm just interested in two one is the firmware for the programmer and the other one is the uh, some of the examples of course one of which is blink so that's the uh, the name of the game today is to get the actual uh, firmware installed on the programmer and to have the, uh, the the programmer actually push out some ones and zeros so that the one of these chips, one of these interesting chips can actually blink. So here I am just downloading the zip file. Now this is the free PDK example. So there's the blink LED sketch, fade sketch. Um, I believe it says on the side here that the inspiration is the sort of Arduino style examples that you get to know um, how these things work. This is the programming software. So it includes the firmware for um, the actual program itself. So that's to put on the STM32. So these are just the zip files downloading. Just having a look around, there's a documentation page. You can see there's a lot there. Um, but at this stage we just, I think, need those two and that's fine. This is just showing the documentation site and a very clean, nice looking programmer compared to mine. I'll start on version five soon when my heart rate uh, returns to normal. And um, yeah. Oh, now this is the, uh, the, the SDCC small device compiler. This is interesting because, you know, most distributions, including uh, Linux uh, distributions of various flavors will have SDCC, the small device C compiler. Um, but you very you really need the latest version. So this is version four. So instead of installing it through the software manager of the operating system itself, uh, I've gone to SourceForge here, and I'm downloading the um, the actual original. And you can download the source code if you want, um, and uh, compile it yourself. So yeah, uh, that's a a bit of a trap actually, because I think originally. I tried this on an 
L Ubuntu distribution and the highest version I could get for that uh, it was an i386 flavor uh, was version I think it was 3.96 of the SDCC and yeah it didn't actually work so you do need version 4 the latest possible is good and here's another trick here too so if you don't want to compile the, the easy pdk program you can actually download a compiled version so here i am downloading the uh, the linux version so either or i think in the end i ended up compiling the version from scratch anyway from software but um, the compiled binaries is just as good so yeah that's pretty much most things here we've got the programmer uh, we've got the firmware just finishing off downloading the small device C compiler and um, yeah that'll be it okay so back again and now we need the software that actually installs the firmware onto the STM32 so we go to oh, we seem to have an oh, look at that we seem to have an extra version we just go and clean that up yep there is an extra zip file in there must have pushed that button twice so I'll delete that and a good time to actually unzip all of these as well so just extract these so that's the binary version of easy pdk programmer that's the programmer software the examples and the small device compiler and i always like to get rid of the zip files afterwards as well um, i don't know why so i'll probably just delete those you can put them somewhere safe if that's what you do but now we're good to go so we list what's in the directory there's your folders now if there's any gaps in what I'm doing oh, it's usually because I'm either plugging or unplugging the actual device but for now we're going to the firmware when you do plug in the device when you first load the firmware you need to hold the button and that makes the device ready for um, for that firmware to be updated and then when you actually want to run the device you unplug it and plug it back in and it's good to go that's showing that we need dfu util so we will install that and if you've never seen linux before uh, there's no rebooting or anything like that it's pretty straightforward you just tell it what you want it goes away and finds it installs it and you're good to go so literally now we're we're fine so we just need that um, it, it actually gives you a command line in the file in the file itself so here I am I think I'm plugging in <laughs> ready to go there's a bit of a gap okay so I'm just going to grab that line again that's the line I need we're in the right directory and the moment of truth it says no dfu capable usb device available now what's happening here is virtual box uh, itself needs to recognize that usb so before i actually run that no dfu capable device available you actually say okay yep i'm actually going to, to select the stm32 so that's a virtual box thing you would you only encounter that in when the operating system is running native and here it is the um, easy pdk program binary uh, is being uploaded to the stm32 it's a beautiful thing and then so as soon as that's complete and you want to actually do some programming you need to pull out the programmer and uh, this time not holding the button in uh, push it back in again and you should be right to go but once again what we'll need to do is we'll need to say uh, to the usb settings of virtualbox that i want this programmer to be recognized 
Now, if you think that's a bit of a hassle, uh, in VirtualBox, of course, you can make that happen automatically. But um, yeah, this is a very quick and dirty vanilla uh, operating system installation, so I didn't bother with that. All right, so we now have a programmed programmer. So now we should go to the Blink sketch and make sure that we can actually load it fine. So we go to the examples. Oh, and actually, I've got to install the compiler first. Yes, that is true. So what I want to do here is I want to take that installation of SDCC, which is the latest one, the 4.01 and make sure that it's on my system. So I just need to, to install it. I just need to copy all those files to user slash local and it should be good. Now I tried it originally, it says permission denied because I'm a local user, so I have to do that as root. So sudo and then same, and then it's all copied and good to go. So now we have SDCC installed. So we should be able to compile those examples now. to make sure that once we plug the programmer uh, sorry the chip into the programmer that we can actually see what's going on so first we'll, here we go make sure that it's actually activated that programmer now that's a virtual boxing there's a listing of all the different ones that we can actually program so the ones that i've got on hand is the pfs154 so that's good we'll start with that and then we'll probe the programmer to see if now oh, it says no programmer found. So I think at this stage what we have to do is actually unplug and replug. So that's all going on in the background. We'll select it again. This time with a bit of luck it should pick up. Nope, no programmer found. So let's go and have a look at that and see what that actually looks like. Okay, so there's the programmer uh, with the chip inserted. I'm not sure what actually happened with that one, but it wasn't picking it up. But now that we've checked all those connections, plugged it in, we should be right to go again. So let's have a look. Going back to the examples directory and blink. And what am I doing here? Oh, I'm actually just compiling it. So, yep, it's compiling fine and it's programmed fine. So, um, I'll skip that step of recognizing that it's a PFS154. But it's programmed so that's good now that's a that's a blinky but i actually wanted to go a little bit further and do two blinks so um activating uh both uh, you know one um, pin and then another pin so um, that code is on the blog and uh, i think we'll just see it briefly here so i just had a bit of a play with the with the blink one really nothing too dramatic so i've just called it two blinks it's just got the main C file and a make file. We might see that probing now. Yes, we do. That's nice. So that's what happens when you actually probe it. It says, yep, there's a PFS154 in there. Go and have a look at the make file and confirm that it is, in fact, uh, a PFS154. So you can change the processor there. But that's fine. Defaults to PFS154. Let's have a brief look at the code. And again, like I said, the code is on the on the blog, so you should be able to go through that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, borrowed very heavily from Blink LED. Yeah, so quarter of a second, turn on, turn off. Then the other one, turn on, turn off. No problem. So... 
only thing to do now is to make it and program it. So let's just type make program. It's making it. It's uploaded it. All good to go. So now at this stage, all you need to do is, well, what I've done is I've pulled out the, um, the chip from the programmer, pulled the program out, uh, out of the USB, um, made up a breadboard with uh, some LEDs and current limiting resistors. Um, here I've probed again, just <laughs> you can see on the screen there, just to make sure that there's still a 154 there, because that's the version that you can reprogram over and over and over again, so it's still recognising that it's that it's there and ready to program, which is nice. But let's have a look at some blinking lights. That's what this project has been about from the start. So yeah, there it is, it's a joy. So um, whereas on previous videos and blogs, you've seen an AVR in there, that is a Badook PFS 154, merrily blinking away at four volts on the breadboard. So yeah, culmination of many weeks work um, and here's the still of the same thing just to uh, so you can have a look at the connections if you like but it's pretty straightforward so what now well the data sheet um, as you can see there version 1.05 is very recent june 9 2020 does contain examples uh, both in c and assembler so we've got a little bit of reading to do but i'll catch you next time